Greetings, everybody. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to a brand new series of Stranded Alien Dawn. Episode 1, Crash Landing. Stranded Alien Dawn is a planet survival sim, placing the fate of a small marooned group in your hands. Forge your story through a compelling and immersive strategic gameplay as you make vital decisions to protect your survivors. Uh, this will be a little mini-series and a tutorial about how to play. I am not an expert, but uh, I know well enough to get around in this game, and of course it will always air on YouTube. So I'm going to be playing as the About Command probably lets you know on the default settings here. So medium game difficulty, and it can be random, easy, medium, or hard, and it really only changes um, your starting resources. And then... There is extra game rules, like Lost Cause, where all the survivor skills are set to zero, or Overqualified, where they're all set, set to ten. So, like, super easy mode, super hard mode. But uh, I'm not going to be touching that. As far as see seeds go, uh, let me go back and start a new one so you know that this seed here, Movie Topic, is completely random. I've never seen it before. Now, in this game... Instead of random characters, there is pre-generated characters, each with their own traits and relationships and passions. So you can pick up to four. You don't need all four, but I will be playing with four. You can pick up to four people to start with, and you should think about team composition when doing this. So I, I sort of have an idea of who I want to pick. I'm going to pick Emil in here, who is very cheery, and also makes amazing food. And she is going to be primarily our cook. Uh, cooking in this game is something that you have to do a lot of just to keep people fed. So having a cook that makes wonderful food is definitely a boon. I'm also going to pick Lara here. Lara is an avid farmer who seeds and harvests plants twice as fast. And also has a bonus to movement speed and manipulation. I will pick Quinn. Quinn is an explorer and likes to go on expeditions, and expeditions take less time. Uh, he's also cheery as well, and he has an interest in intellect and skills in passion, um, skills in, in construction and uh, physical and crafting. And then last but not least, let's see here, who am I going to round this out with? I'll pick Simon. Uh, Simon is healthy and doesn't bleed as much and also moves quickly and is interested in crafting and skilled in intellect. He just doesn't really like to construct. So here's our cast and we are going to start. Right at the start, I'm going to pause the game so I can get the lay of the land. It's very flat terrain. Interesting. There is a ravine to, I'm going to call it my east, although cardinal directions are kind of random right now. Uh, right at the start, one person is going to be having a bit of a breakdown as a result of the crash. This is just a, a random starting thing. It would always be one of your four. And taking a look at the resources around me, there are plenty of ores, which is great. There is some bright leafed plants. I mean, I know what it is, but uh, oh, there is some tube plants. Some pointy red plants. One thing that I don't have an abundance nearby is wood. The forests are kind of far away, so that is a bit of a disadvantage. All right. Then the first thing I want to do before uh, unpausing is go to activities and set up uh, better priorities than what was given to everybody at the start. So I'm going to make Simon my hunter and Emily can hunt as well, but others will have a priority of five. The lower the, high, uh, the, lower the number, the more 
priority is given to it. And then, let's see, scavenge will go to, I'm not going to worry about that. Cooking is going to be our executive chef. No one else should cook. Crafting should go to the person with the passion in it. And this looks just about right. I might want to adjust further. Uh, then there's also schedule. So I can do a custom schedule here. For now, I'm going to leave this alone, but I'll probably manipulate this schedule over time. Uh, then there is also research to be queued up. I don't have a research bench yet, but that's one of the first things I'm going to get. Um, I also want to decide on where the base location should be. And I think that moving... Hmm. I'm just going to set up temporary base camp around the back of the wreck. So right now what I'm doing is I'm setting up some basic stockpiles so we can store things on the ground. And some basic shelters for us to put sleeping spots in. The bare, 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 bare minimum. Then I'm also going to put a research desk. Probably two, in fact. So two research desks. And unpause the game. Uh, you will see that uh, other ship chunks are going to be landing around us, which is totally normal. And let's go ahead and cut some of these bushes that yield sticks. And then, as I said before, uh, trees are not nearby, so that's a real disadvantage. So we're going to have to go moving kind of a far way to get timber. So I'm likely going to want to plant trees pretty early on so that we don't have to make so um, such a long trip for resources. The initial landing pot I'm going to scavenge for resources. You get... Um, Maybe electronic components, or power cores, or weapons, or cloth, or scrap metal, stuff like that, out of that. And I'm also going to trigger some of the stone around here to be mined up. Alright, so everybody has their tasks. Uh, Simon, if you are standing around doing nothing, I think I'm going to find a task for you. So Simon... Let's go ahead and have you analyze an evergreen tree. That way I will have the ability to plant it, which can be come in handy because this base location is nice and flat and open, uh, but it doesn't have a lot of raw resources immediately nearby. And Quinn should be snapping out of his uh, uh, crying phase. There it goes. And... He's off to start building the shelter, as he is primarily our builder. So Emmeline is cutting down some trees. Lara cut down some of these bushes here. And what that's going to allow us to do is to set up um, a campfire so that we can do some basic cooking. And then also set up an eating table so we can eat on a table rather than on the ground. Because we are civilized, after all. Simon is analyzing the uh, evergreen tree, and that's uh, a pretty common task in this game. Everything is alien, even if you can kind of figure out what it is. So, for instance, one could assume that this bright-leafed plant uh, that kind of looks like cotton is, in fact, cotton-like, and you would be right. But other plants aren't so obvious, like this pointy red plant. What is its purpose? I know, and it requires an analysis, but uh, but you have to figure that out first. So step one, uh, set up basic shelter. And that's what Quinn is doing over here. Building a little metal shelter over four initial beds. Now taking a look a little bit further out, we have got more two plants and bushes that look like they have berries, and then things that look like melon or squash, squash or pumpkin or something like that. That's around uh, wide leaf plants. And I'm not going to give any, everything away. I mean, I have played this before, but, uh, but I'll let you guys discover it as I discover it. 
Not a lot of crash sites around me. Not a lot of space debris. So that's going to be another limiting factor as well. And then we have, of course, the fauna. Not just the flora, but we've got all sorts of wild creatures out here as well. Some more dangerous than others. Okay, we do have our first research bench, so I'm going to go into the research tree here. And the first thing I want to get is metal refinement. And knowing that I want to get metal refinement, I am going to analyze this interesting rock. Maybe it has metals in it. We'll see. Tim Tacos, uh, thank you for the resub as well. And Bryceette for a gifted sub. And Quarasol for the resub. Welcome all. Pleasure to have you. This is a lot of wood. It does require a lot of wood to get a initial base set up. So getting a huge stockpile of it early on will benefit us in the long run. And it looks like Simon is almost done analyzing the evergreen tree. And then he can go back to regular research. I'm going to have him haul some wood back to the base. So now with the research of the evergreen tree, I can plant them for myself if I want. And the soil uh, does have fertility. I'm not about to start planting the evergreen trees just yet, but um, just know that, that fertility does play a large role in planting out your farms. Because not all soils are the same, and not all things that... Uh, some plants require rockier soils, some don't. So, for instance... Without knowing anything about this game, it does look like these cotton-like plants grow in the grasses, whereas these tube-like structures do not. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. Alright, so we are starting research on the research bench, and I'll go over some of the UI here now. So in the top left, we have spring. That's the current season, the year, the day, the hour. This is how far into the research we have made. And then the external temperature, it's 15 Celsius. And the top, it is your resource bar. Um, actually, Simon, one thing I want to do for you is to have you pick up the laser pistol. He, of course, is the person that gets healed really, really quickly. That's part of his personality. He's, um, he's healthy and recovers fast. So if anyone goes into combat, it ought to be either him or maybe Quinn, uh, who's also decent at combat. Sammy and Hatsy, thank you for the resub as well. So Quinn is over here, uh, observing the interesting rock. Emlyn is finishing up with the trees that I had her cut down. And then Lara over here is scavenging the landing pod for resources. Oh, I got real lucky. I got a pulse rifle. So a pulse rifle is a short-range rifle which sort of knocks enemies out. Um, sort of non-combat, but certainly better than nothing. Alright, Quinn. You are getting food to eat. And unfortunately, I didn't get the kitchen table up in time, so we are eating on, on foot. And they're not going to be super happy about that. But luckily, they do have this huge mood boon uh, right at the start of Survivor's Determination. And then Quinn also has Catharsis because he started out crying. So, there is um, some time to have these guys get sorted. We just uh, salvaged synthetic textiles from the shipwreck. I'm just going to keep salvaging. Alright, looking good. Now on with more of the UI, you of course have the colonist portraits up here with bars that represent their happiness, and then there's also extra icons for like weapons or whether they're bleeding or hurt or something like that. In the top right, you have some of the overlay UI, so you can hide the resource bars, hide the amounts of resources that are in your stockpiles, hide the portraits, show the active orders, or hide the active orders depending on uh, whether you want to see things that are being ordered or not. And then the rooms 
hides the roof so you can see into buildings. And down here you've got orders, like collect, cut, mine, harvest, etc. You've got the basic camp, shelter, farming, which I only know how to farm the evergreen trees, but I'm not going to start a farm until I have other crops to put down. Uh, stockpiles and shelves. Early on, it's fine to just have stockpiles on the ground, but eventually what will happen is things do rot. So, for instance, uh, outside twigs will decay in 48 days. Or this gun in 48 days. So you're going to want to put these things away uh, before they go bye-bye. And put a roof over them. And then, of course, food. Some food will keep longer indoors, but then also there is uh, electrical tech like freezers, etc., that uh, you will eventually employ. Just look it around to see if there's any animals closing in on camp. Doesn't seem to be. And there's some mining going on. Good. I'm going to allow everybody to do uh, basic research, and that way it keeps them from being idle, because obviously you don't want any idleness if you can help it. And the game is telling me that I'm missing resources for the campfire, and that's because I need scrap metal. Normally you get scrap metal off the landing pads or pods, but I just haven't been lucky with that yet. So I may need to rethink how I'm building this campfire. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll cancel that and then go to camps, go to campfire and do a stone campfire because I have mined up some stone. And then over here on this research bench, I'm going to change this one up. I thought I was going to get more scrap metal, but obviously that's not the case. So I'll put a research desk made out of wood instead of scrap metal. That way I can actually afford. So on this campfire, uh, we're only allowed to make basic foods. So I'm going to have Emelyn uh, make some cooked emergency rations, which is a little bit tastier than just the raw rations that we have. And then also, because she's such a good chef, um, she makes it even nicer. I'm giving this first opportunity here. Um, whether or not we are going to have a little bit of a, a celebration tonight. So we put together a camp as quick as we could considering the circumstances. We are not sleeping in the dirt. We have a roof over our heads and a fire to illuminate the dark on certain nights. And most important of all, we have survived. To us, this feels like an achievement worth honoring. Should we gather at uh, 9 p.m. tonight to celebrate around the campfire? And it looks like you guys say yes. So there is a little indicator up here that we'll be celebrating uh, tonight. Awesome. JB, thank you for the uh, resub as well. Ooh, I got a CPU core off of that uh, landing pad. If only, if only I would get some scrap metal, that'd be nice. I really want the scrap metal. But Emelyn is now starting to cook up some of the emergency ration foods, and that way they'll be a little bit tastier. So that's the new resource that we got over here. And then Quinn, as soon as you're done, I'm going to have you equip the Pulse Rifle. So that way I have two people who are now armed. Simon is almost done wrapping up the Observing the Interesting Rock. Uh, one little tip that I have for you is like, definitely don't queue up too much observation early on. You definitely want people working on the research trees. And if you queue up, queue up way too much observation, you won't get research done. And then you'll fall behind and have a hard time surviving. And there we go, there's some scrap metal from the, the, the pod. So this pod is about half done scavenged, uh, but then there's another phase that happens after you're finished scavenging, and we'll see that in a minute. You made that mistake, trying to analyze everything? Yeah, it's bad. Because then, then you fall significantly behind and playing catch up sucks. So this is ore. It's an ore deposit. So I'm going to mine up the ore, knowing that I'm going to turn it into metal ingots. And I am almost done with the uh, metal refinement here. The current priority now is going to be 
build structures. Because we don't want to be in a basic camp for too much longer. So metal refinement just got researched, and that allows me to make furnaces. So I'm going to queue up two furnaces here in order to turn the either scrap metal or metal ore into uh, ingots that I can construct with. And next research I am queuing up is construction basics, which allows me to start to build structures. And then after that, I'll queue up electrical grids. And there we go, there's the furnace. So in this furnace, it will automatically set up a bill to smelt uh, metal alloys from scrap, but I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, because I don't have a lot of scrap, and also I do plan on mining out that uh, that ore that I found. So Emelyn is already heading to the ore, and instead of turning our scrap metal, which can be used for other things, uh, metal ore can really only be used in the furnaces to make alloys. So it's probably more efficient to just uh, mine up our ores. We should also see that there is a mood benefit when we eat these prepared cooked meals. So we'll see that here. Quick meal, but exquisite. So it doubled the morale for that. Oops. Okay. So unfortunately, he managed to sneak by a metal alloy from scrap bill uh, before I was able to cancel that, but that's okay. So here's some of the metal ores. And now that I have metal ores on the ground, I can go over to the furnace here and queue up a smelting. And I'm gonna say smelt until we have 100 ingots or 100 alloys. Um, Lara just leveled up, or Emelyn rather, just leveled up in physical, uh, having spent time mining the ores. So she's bringing 40 ores back over. And it is 8 p.m., so we are celebrating our survival. They don't dance very well, but it's the best they can do. Just got a whole lot of a, a big stack of additional meals off of the pod. That will keep us fed for quite a bit longer, which is great. And this should be good for our mood. In fact, Lara is now euphoric, I believe. Yep, she's 100% total happiness, no risk of Meltdown, and here's the survived the crash and celebrated the camp. They dance like Sims? Yeah, they do. So I'm getting pretty close to construction basics, and here you can see the completed research in a separate tab that I only have metal refinement, um, and after construction basics, I'm going to go to electrical grids. There's also some additional research that I want to get done. So that would be over here. These squash-like plants, I want to analyze them. Because we're going to need a source of food, and farming is something that Lara is really good at. So we'll use her skills to our advantage. Yeah, let's get rid of that alloy from scrap and set up the ores and do 100. Good call. Everybody eating their breakfast meals. Now, Simon just got a minus because of a lack of food variety, so all the more reason to go over to this squash to figure out if it's edible. And after the squash, uh, maybe I also do the what seems to be berries on the bush. And the furnace is stoked. Great. We 
getting the meals prepped that we want. The cooked meals, which have a shorter shelf life than the uh, uncooked meals, so you need to eat them quickly. And building basics is nearly done. Okay, there it is. Construction basics is finished. Go to the research tab, and you can see some brick rooms, concrete rooms, musical instruments. Uh, those are options that have opened up. Not that I plan on pursuing them, but they are available. And then one other special type of research here, if I go back to the tree, is the right side uh, with breakthroughs. So there are ways to uh, make even more improved um structures and the breakthroughs that you're offered i actually don't know what causes the breakthroughs to be selected but um it's a random selection so you don't get the same breakthroughs for each uh gameplay which is kind of neat so now with the construction basics we can start to build actual shelter and not this just shoddy little um makeshift shelter that i have and what i want to do is i want to set up a sort of kitchen dining room area. Um, but before I do that, I would also like to figure out where the fertile soil is, because I don't want to set up my buildings where it's arable, farmable land. So that comes into play where I want to um, analyze these foods, because I'm planning on trying to farm the squash and the berries. I think that would be a good combination, given what's around me. Taking a a look a little bit further out. So we have some creatures here that uh, had been attacked and I'm going to queue up to butcher them. I'm going to tell Emmeline to finish up mining and then head to the butchered creatures. And the sooner that you butcher them, the more um, resources you get from them. So getting out to them early is ideal. And there's also two large creatures out this way as well. So I'm going to have Quinn stop what he's doing and butcher that one. And then Lara, stop what you're doing, butcher that one. Given all the creatures that I'm about to butcher, even though I didn't actually kill them myself, I want a drying rack because... Well, let's turn that around. I want a drying rack because we will have uh, hides and meats that need processing as a result. Hey, and Banish, thank you for the resub. I, I hope that your, uh, your recovery from COVID fares well. And we butcher it and yield its meat. And there is sort of the concept of red meat, of poultry, and insect meat. Um, so if you mouse over it, you can see like this, for instance, big horde animal gives raw red meat and hides, whereas this gives just raw insect meat, no hides, nothing like that. And then if we select a bird, wherever I might be able to find a bird, it would be raw poultry. And it changes what kinds of things that you have available to cook. But it does look like a lot of the fauna out here has been fighting one another because there's a, just a lot of dead fauna kind of everywhere. And keep your eyes open because if you can butcher the fauna without having to fight it, it saves you a lot of time. So here is a instance of a flightless bird giving raw poultry. Now that I have people bringing in uh, meats, I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna stop cooking the cooked emergency rations and start cooking meat soup instead. Also, in the tabs for everybody here, I'm going to turn raw food off so that we do not eat raw food, we only eat cooked food quick meals or uh, emergency rations, but no raw food. There's the drying rack. In this drying rack, you can set up to accept certain resources like smoke leaf, hides, or red meat. And I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna allow all three of them on this rack.
Okay, we are very close to having a breakthrough with the squash plant. 77%. Oh, and it's raining. So rain benefits the wild plants out here, where they grow a little bit faster. Um, but we can't harvest them until we know what it is that we're harvesting. That's one of the prerequisites. And it's warning me that I am running low on fuels for the fire. And for that, all I need to do is to cut some broadleaf bushes down for sticks. So I've queued that up. And there we go. Meat soup is now on the menu. And that will fall under uh, cooked foods for quick meals. And we should be able to eat that, no problem. Back road, thank you for the resub as well. Full year. Come on, Simon. I'm going to force you to finish this. He was about to leave. I'll micromanage him a little bit. There we go. So it is something called a buttermelon. It's kind of like a pumpkin melon. And it uh, can be harvested and planted. So if we go to farms here, here is the buttermelon option. And as you can see, any of the terrain around my starting base is totally fine to have buttermelon. It's 100% growth. So I'm going to set up a 10 by 10 buttermelon field right here. Why not? Uh, the next thing that I wanted to analyze is the berries here. So I'm going to go observe the berries and try to figure out what they are and what I can do to uh, to make out of them. Electrical grids is nearly done. As you can see, I don't have anything queued up after electrical grids. Because I'm planning on having electrical grids open up new options for me. Alright, there we go. So if we take a look here. Solar panels, wind turbines, refrigerators, freezers, all that stuff is, um, is now potentially unlockable. And there was a bit of a tutorial about electrical grids, but I'm not going to read through that. Because I've played before. So we have power poles, power cell generators, power switches, electric cook stoves, floodlights for outside, ceiling lamps for inside, wall lamps, fireplaces, heating stoves, heaters, etc. These are all things that have recently been unlocked. So next research after this, I'm going to do refrigerators. And what I'm hoping to do is I'm hoping to be able to find electronics either from the last scavenge of this landing pod or one of the other spaceship debris around so that I can open up the option to research wind and solar. And here you can see the red meat drying on the rack so it gets preserved better. Taking a quick look around, seeing what there is. Oh, there's now a thunderstorm. Um, and there's a risk of someone getting hit by lightning. It's not fatal if you do, but it's unfortunate because it makes you faint. So I'm hoping that we avoid that. The berry bushes are coming along. And then the other thing that we could do now that we have researched the buttermelon is to actually harvest it. And one of my uh, furnaces got hit by lightning, so I'm glad it was a furnace, not a person. The dry rack is a starting tech, yeah. There we go. So now it's repaired. And I doubt I'm going to get the electrical stuff from the landing pod on the last try. So we might have to go to other debris.
I did, however, just get a large harvest of buttermelons. So with those large harvest of buttermelons, I'm going to queue up a uh, veggie soup up to four as well. It's uh, very handy to have a variety of food. It makes your people happier rather than to have a red meat every day or buttermelon every day. A little variety goes a long way. Because morale is a um, is an important thing to manage in this game. And some of the starting meals that I made are starting to rot away, but we're not low on food. As you can see, raw food, I have enough for 33 meals. Uh, we're doing just fine. Those buttermelons are going to come into handy, keeping us fed. Just trying to keep tabs on what's going on in our neighborhood. Some of these bighorned animals are dead. At least that one is. Yeah, I'll go butcher it. A little bit out of the way. But not terribly. So the last yield on this landing pod is probably just going to be scrap metal. Yep. It was. All right. So let's queue up another landing pod to try to get the electronics from. So that we have the option to research uh, uh, electricity. And then once I have the bush analyzed and I plan a farming spot for the bush, these pe peculiar bushes, uh, I will start planning out a foundation for a kitchen and dining room. So it is a fruit bush, and I'm going to order my guys to harvest it, what's out here. And then the fruit bush, just my luck, is fully grown in the soil that's around the starting base. Ooh, I salvaged some pants off the uh, spaceship debris. All right, we have our first uh, combat situation. So the game has a ever ramping up sort of combat where more and more wild animals come to mess with you, essentially. And uh, what I like to do is go guerrilla tactics on them to try to get ahead of them attacking because at night, it's more difficult to kill and shoot bugs than during the day. So I've drafted Quinn and Simon, both of which have wet firearms, uh, sent to hunt these bugs before these bugs get out of hand and attack me as a larger, more organized group. And sort of a hit and run, stutter stepping technique is definitely superior in this case. Rather than letting them come and brawl you like that. So your, your people can uh, get weapons that allows them to, like, melee weapons to make melee combat a little bit easier. Uh, but ideally, you want to be taking them out at a distance so that you don't have to melee them. Simon can run fast. That's one of his uh, perks. So if I can have them chase Quinn, Simon can pick them off. Or the inverse. There we go. That's a good stun. The Pulse Rifle doesn't really do damage on its own, but it does stun them and slow them down so that I can more easily clear the group. And that way I don't have to spend so much time kiting. And now there's only two bugs left. That one and this one. Cool. And we're done. And I'm going to observe this bug here uh, to try to figure out what it is and why it's attacking us. And Simon is going back to base camp to get uh, medical treatment for his wounds. So now that we know that uh, this is where our starting farms are going to be, I'm going to plan the starting structure accordingly. So I'm going to stick a...
an 8x10 uh, kitchen area here. I'm going to have the stairwells one here. And one here. And that's just foundation. That's not the full uh, building. So this is the discovery about Scarabay. Analyzing their species. Hey, Nick. Thank you for the resub. The Scarabay, uh, because they're bugs, you can butcher them, but only for insect meat. And insect meat is not exactly uh, a happy source of food. So I avoid it if I can. Here's Emelyn healing up Simon. Simon only had like one little bite or something. He was he came away from that with just one nibble on his legs. So that's not bad. Alright, now that we know that we are going to be setting up shop here. I'm going to set up a max size uh, evergreen tree field for Lara to likely plant in order to source my wood a little bit closer to the base than having to run all the way over to the woods to our whatever cardinal direction that is. Quinn is risking a meltdown, but I think he should be okay here. He just needs to eat. He's hangry. And that brings me to scheduling, because there's some things that we could do to try to keep them happier by scheduling them uh, time for them to be able to eat and feed themselves and, and relax and that kind of thing. So uh, we can go in this scheduler now um, to try to work out a good schedule for our survivors to have time to themselves. So let's go do that. So managing the schedule, I'm gonna pause for a second. I'm gonna say, because it's people don't work all that productively in the dark, uh, that we definitely sleep in the wee hours of the night. And then before we sleep, we maybe, let's say, relax. And then uh, we are going to allow for like, a gradual wake up time here and then maybe like a meal in the middle of the day and that could be the uh, the sort of schedule we go for now and I'll tinker with it if it needs tinkering later on but we're getting some good morale as a result of food variety eating at the table meals were exquisite and once I have electrical power I'll be able to start making even better meals like chef meals that make people quite happy. Thank you for tuning in to Stranded Alien Dawn, which originally streamed live on Twitch November 28th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. I'll catch you next episode or upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow stranded.